All right, welcome back. Uh, here's the project for this week. A little poster board organizing shelf doohickey. Uh, so I got asked to do one of these for the school. Uh, they just wanted something that they can put all their colors into different steps. Uh, so they don't get all mixed up and it's easier, you know, if you wanted yellow or red, blue, green, you can get as a reach. Cause right now they just have it on a, on a stack on some sort of cart. Uh, so I'll take you through the build and show you a little something special about this sort of box. Here we go. Okay, so this is how we're gonna figure this out here. And uh, what I'm about to show you, uh, we'll be able to apply it to a couple of different projects and I'll, and I'll explain that later. But for you young kids out there, cover your ears because I'm gonna say a couple of swear words. We need to do math and more specifically algebra. Now I know I, know I shouldn't be swearing on this channel, but we did it anyways. So in our case, we have a set dimension because it's got to fit inside an opening. Uh, it's going to be 15 and three quarters high, but our top here is going to be three quarters of an inch and inset into our sides, which gives us 15 inches left. Now the person that wants this done said she wanted about five to seven compartments uh, and each compartment to be uh, as close to two inches as it can make it. So we got to figure out how many we can fit in here. So how we're going to do this is the number of sides or the number of shelves, I should say, we'll just use X times the thickness of our shelf. Actually, let's use A so we don't have two X's in the way. <clears throat> so A times the thickness of our shelves, which is 0.25. So whatever that answer is, we subtract from 15. So answer we'll call B. Subtract that from 15. So that'll give us the leftover working space uh, when we take into consideration the thickness of our shelves. And then we'll divide uh, by, well, I don't know, we'll start with five. We'll see what that gives us. Um, and we'll see what we can work with. All right, so I plugged that number in. So we're gonna try it with five shelves. So I got my five shelves right here laid out, which is gonna give us six openings. So if we do five times a quarter inch, that gives us an inch and a quarter of material or of room wasted just from the shelf thickness. So we take our 15 inch side, subtract that. So that gives us three, oh, sorry, 13 and three quarter inch of workable opening space. And if we divide that by six, cause that's how many we have, we have six openings. That means each opening is gonna be 2.29 inches, whatever that fraction works out to. So I think we can shrink this. We're gonna try seven openings uh, and see what happens. So now we're gonna add a shelf. So we're gonna go six times uh, two five, which is gonna give us an inch and a half total thickness of shelf. 15 divided by, oh, sorry again, don't teach math. 15 subtracted by 1.5 is 13.5. This time we gotta divide that by seven because we have seven openings. Let's see, use the old computer box here. 13 by five, divided by seven, gives us 1.93-ish. I think that works out to about 15, 16. So if you go, each opening is one and 15, 16. Close enough to two inches for me. So I think that's where we're gonna go with seven shelves, sorry, six shelves, seven openings at one and 15 sixteenths um, space. Now, if you weren't constrained uh, to that space like I am, you can work around this backwards and say you wanted 10 openings uh, that were an inch and a half, All right, That would give you 15 inches right there. So if we've got 10 openings, it means we've got nine shelves at whatever thickness you might be, these two's half an inch this time, which gives us four and a half of space. So you would just add 15 to 14.5 and that would give you your total height um, of the side piece. Hope that kind of makes sense for, for you. Yeah, we'll we'll kind of go over it again as we build, but that's just the way that you can kind of figure out the math uh, for these sorts of projects. So what we're gonna do now, really important, is cut our side piece and our back piece all at the same time so they're the same size, and we're gonna cut these dados in there all at the same time too, to the saw. 
Okay, here are the pieces we're gonna use. Quick change of plans. Uh, my back that I was intending to put on here is only 15 and a half inches tall and I need a 15 and three quarter. So we're gonna scrap that. We're gonna make everything at 15 inches and just slap the, the top well on top of it. We're not gonna bother uh, putting a, a rabbit all the way around. It's gonna be inside some cart anyway, so we're not gonna be able to tell. Uh, the side piece here, we're gonna rip down. We're gonna be able to have both the pieces, the lengths into one. And here's the back, we'll cut that to 15 too. Again, it's important we do this all at the same time uh, so they're exactly the same size. We don't wanna be messing around with that fence there in between cuts. Now you can tell, not the same plywood, that's okay. Like I said in the last video, we're trying to use up as much scraps as I can. Uh, and it is for the school, right? So cheaper to better. Picked up that piece of hardboard that we're gonna use for the shelves for 25 bucks. So all in, it's gonna cost them 25 bucks in material. So good deal. All right, back and sides are cut. Uh, now what we're gonna do is make all the grooves or the dados for uh, the shelves that we're gonna put in. Now, normally you would cut this to length and then cut them through, but if we keep it as one, when we go to make our cuts, we know that both sides will be uh, absolutely perfect. So we're gonna keep this as one piece right now. Uh, but before we get started, remember we had said it's gonna be one and 15 sixteenths space in between each shelf. So instead of doing, adding that for every single cut, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is make a one and 15 16 inch spacer block. So I'll be able to cut, put that in between the, the piece and the fence after and move that along uh, one and 15 16 uh, every time. Let's grab our push block. Hey, look at that drawer. And <laughs> get to cutting. Okay, while you weren't looking, I threw that uh, a dado in there at a quarter inch, ran a test piece. And there we go. It fits in there actually a little loose, which is fine, because uh, they'll be able to pull these shelves out. Uh, if ever they have paper stuck behind it, they can go ahead and easily pull them out. So I think that's gonna work perfect. So we're gonna go set up the saw now, and uh, I'll show you how to make those repeated cuts at uh, exactly the size that we need. Okay, so we got our first cut. Cut the fence set at one and 15 sixteenths. I'm gonna run the back through, the sides through, and then I'll show you how we're gonna move that fence over. First cut's done now. I just put the board, there it is, back on the blade. I unlock this, slide it over, and that spacer block we made earlier, we're just gonna put that in. Slide up our fence against it, lock it down, take this out. And now when we go to make our second cut, it's going to be exactly another one and 15 16 away. So we're going to repeat that process until we make our uh, six trails. Well, we got some good news and some bad news. 
good news is everything's lining up real nice. Um, about halfway through, I started to think, boy, these are getting, look awfully thin. That's because when I weighed my spacer, I didn't take into account the thickness of the blade. Told you I didn't teach mass. Uh, on the bright side, these aren't that thin. They're about one, one and three quarter, which for a poster board, it'll be fine. And I actually think she'll prefer, actually has eight spaces now, kind of real thin one that we'll put uh, on top. That could be for your, you know, the ones that are scraps or whatever. Don't take up a lot of space. So not a big deal. We'll work with what we got. Hey, you know, if you don't make a mistake, is it a real project? I have the setup to 20 and a half for our lengths. I always gotta make two cuts, get a little stop lock there to make sure that both of them are gonna be exactly the same. two sides in the back and you can see that our lines match up perfectly because we did uh, cut them all at the same time so now what we're gonna do is just cut a groove in here uh, so that that has a, a little tighter connection I really don't like doing butt joints um, I think it's a lot stronger if you take the time just to make uh, a little groove so we're gonna do that into our two side pieces uh, nail it and glue it together put the top on and then start popping out all these shelves So I did that first one with the fence. That's gonna give me my exact three quarters of an inch for the back piece. But if I keep going this way, that blade's gonna get right up to it. I don't wanna go put the sacrificial one on there. So what we're gonna do is just finish up by flipping it around. And we'll just keep nibbling through in this direction here. pieces are done these notches are all finished up it's gonna take a little bit of time and sand off the inside of all these cuts so that uh, no paper gets ripped up by these sharp edges yeah now this temporarily clamped up uh, like so we're gonna put a top on it so we already took the measurements we're gonna cut this to size and when we glue it up this is just help keep everything square uh, I'm not gonna put a bottom on it uh, I don't think it's going to need it. And actually what that's going to allow, I've got this flipped upside down. is because I made that little boo-boo, they're going to be able to choose whether they put a shelf in here or not. So I know that they have a lot of blue paper. They may just omit the shelf completely and give themselves one large place and still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, dividers uh, that we talked about. So let's cut to the size, glue it all together, and uh, keep rolling. thinking boy I got 10 minutes to kill today where's that goop I'll put more glue on stuff now key here is to make sure all the slots are lined up First, put your gun as far away as possible right there Let you stay put Top's gonna do two things. I'm gonna keep dust from getting on top of the paper. And it's gonna help me make sure that my sides are bowed in or out in either direction. So we'll start from the front, or I guess the back. We'll make sure that our pieces are nice and square. I'm afraid to take the time with this part. That's pretty good right there. Just tack that in place. Now the back is bowed a little bit, so I'm just going to take a 
Or am I going to have to pick a plant? We've got enough muscles. Now, we can bring these in so that they're even, and this way we'll know that they're parallel. All right, all we have to do now, cut our shelves, and yeah, this project's done. Okay, got all my shelves cut, put one in just to make sure that uh, they fit properly. So now we've got to do is line them up. Slide them in, and there we have it. We'll put the rest in here, show how it looks. Well, that's a little wobbly, but it's only paper. I mean, come on, how strong does that have to be? Well, there you have it. We'll be able to store all their different colors of a poster board in there, help you keep it organized. And our on-purpose extra white spot for the blue, because I know they have a lot of blue paper. Uh, so there, I think we'll like it. Now, what's really neat about this method of putting this stuff together is that you can make this whatever size that you want so for instance for my sandpaper i did the same technique right so i did the sides all one piece cut them in half i didn't put it back on this just slapped them together and now i've got all my sandpaper on a uh, different shelf so that was really easy to do now i'm going to show you something really neat you can do if you take this and you turn it that way but i gotta take it into the kitchen all right, here we are in the kitchen. Uh, like I was saying, we bought the place. There was one shelf up on a line here and the missus and I being vertically challenged as we are, really tough to get to the stuff that was way up. So what I did, ta-da. So same thing, all those little slots on the top matching up with all the little slots at the bottom. There's no glue, there's no nothing here. I just cut the panels to fit and everything is just staying kind of put. So this way we have access to all of our uh, muffin tins and cutting boards and all these little doohickeys uh, well within reach. So again, it's that same technique. Whoop, just flip to see daisy. So don't be scared to experiment. Figure out how this could work for you. Again, size doesn't matter. It's all about getting these spaces um, even so that these slots line up. Don't forget to add that thickness of the blade when you measure your, your cuts. Okay, looking back, heck, I even confused myself with that explanation at the beginning. Uh, so let's go over it one more time, slowly, so we all know what we're doing. Plus, I'll show you how to make up for that little mistake I made. So again, when you have your sides, see, this is 20 inches. Now, you want nominal size. If you have a top here and a bottom here, you wanna make sure you take the measurement from there. Okay, you don't want the total, you just want the inside dimension. Okay, that's very important. Next thing you gotta do is figure out how many openings you want or how many shelves do you want. And an easy way to remember, if you had a box like this and you had one shelf, well now you got two openings. So however many shelves you're gonna need, it's, you know, add one and you have the opening. So if we want five shelves, that gives you six openings. Now, when we add our shelves and those shelves have a thickness to them, so that's gonna eat up that 20 inches. Now let's use half an inch. If we have five shelves at half an inch, that means we're gonna have two and a half inches worth of shelf space. That's gonna eat up that 20 inches, right? So let's go 20 minus our 2.5 which gives us 17 and a half inches of usable space right so now we got to divide that by the amount of opening so that's going to give us that nominal distance in between each so we can split them up evenly okay so we have what do we say five no six six openings 17.5 
divided by six, that's gonna give us a really weird number. So again, we're gonna take out the old Casio brain box here. 17.5 divided by six gives us 2.92. Now you can go online, figure out what that is in fractions. I mean, get within whatever, right? So when you get that number, we'll call it 15 sixteenths again for the sake of concentricity. So two and 15 sixteenths. What I forgot to do was add the thickness of our blade when we go to make those cuts, right? So that ended up making our shelves about an eighth of an inch or our space is an eighth of an inch too small. So we go two and 15 sixteenths plus a half an inch for our shelf. Oh, and doing maths real quick on the fly here. Two and 15, that's actually eight sixteenths. So we add that together, which is 23 sixteenths, which is one and seven sixteenths. So it'd be three and seven sixteenths. That's how big our spacer is gonna have to be. I hope that makes it clear. Sorry, I kind of messed up there, but uh, you know, mistakes happen and what are you gonna do? We got lucky and it worked out for us. So hopefully when you do this for yourself, just take your time with it, double check, and I'm sure you'll do just fine. Uh, again, thanks for watching. I hope you like this one and you know, go ahead, try this one out. There's endless possibilities with that, uh, with that method there. See you soon.